In Power Apps, collections are a special type of variable, right? We call them a table variable. So Power Apps collections, what they do is they let you capture rows and columns of data. Whereas if you think about a traditional variable where you're just capturing one piece of information, right? Dog color equals white. That is a, you know, like using set or update context. Collections, we use collect or clear collect. The idea is it's rows and columns. So it is, you know, name, uh, buddy, color, white, weight, 60 pounds. Name, chewy, color, tan, weight, 110 pounds, right? That's what a collection is. So in Power Apps, we use collections a lot of times for two real reasons, right? One is to grab the data ahead of time so we can grab it and like bunch it all up before we save it off to our data source, especially like in offline apps where we want to like, you know, grab a bunch of things and hold it in memory. And then when we're done, we'll save it to the data source. So that's one way we use collections. The other way that we use collections is to cache information. So if we don't want to keep going back to a data source, we can put the data into a collection and then reference that because it's a table just like the data source is. So this video is a remake of one that I made about five years ago that has 300,000 views. I thought it's probably time to update it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through all the pieces of what a collection is and empower you to start using them in your Power Apps. Now keep in mind, if you look in the description below, there is jumping off points. So if you wanna jump to certain sections because you just wanna see how to use one function, great, jump ahead. But if you're trying to understand the whole picture, this is your video. So let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over on the desktop, I've started with a blank app. I've done nothing to it, so we can all learn about this together. And so the first thing I always start with when I'm explaining collections is how do you create one so we can then explain what you're creating, right? So we're gonna throw a button on the screen and we're gonna use the on select property and we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna say collect and then coal, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna call it coal stuff, my usual. And so then here you're going to need to put in a record, right? So a record is a row in a list. And so a record is always done like this in Power Apps, there's little curly braces and we close it. So that would put a blank row. We don't want a blank row, but that would do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, all right, I want a name and I want that to be Lori, right? I had a call with Lori this morning, hi Lori. And so, um, right, that will create a column name of called name and then it'll have the value of Lori and then say we wanted to have her phone number, PN for phone number, and her phone number is 12. Yeah, she has a very short phone number, it's weird. But so that right there is a record that has two columns. And so if we press this button once, so we'll just hold down the Alt key so we can press the button. Now if I come up here and highlight Cool Stuff, look, Cool Stuff, Data Type Table, and then we hit the drop down, and you can see that we have a name column with Lori and PN for 12. Now the way that Collect works is that if you press this button again, it is going to add a row, right? Because collect says, hey, if the collection doesn't exist, create it and then add the row. If it already exists, which it does now, then just add the row. So if we press this button two, three, four, five times now, now we're going to see in our collection, we have five Lori 12s, right? Which I realize the data is done, right? Why would I want to do this? I know, but we got we to get there in baby steps, right? So that is how you would put that in there. If you want to collect to put in two records at once, you could literally just go here, do a comma, do your curly braces again, and then you could do name, and then you would do Tom, and then PN, and then we would do 33. And now what's gonna happen is we just have a collection with Lori and Tom. When you edit the collect, it wiped out what was cached in there. So, but now if we press this button again, so let's press it two, three times, now we should see that we've got six people in here. All right, so Lori Tom, Lori Tom, Lori Tom, six. Now, if you're thinking Shane, it's a tough way to visualize this, I agree. Remember that collections are tables. Insert a gallery, right? What do galleries want for their items property? They just want a table. So there's nothing from stopping me from going up here and typing in cool stuff. And there they are. I'm kind of pull this over and we could change this to be, you know, title and subtitle and then just change this from name to PN. And so now we see the data. Great, right? So let's take our button and let's just name this button collect because it creates a simple collection for us. Now, what if I want to wipe out all that data? No big deal, insert a button. And so with this button, what we're going to do is we're going to use a different function called clear. Clear takes a collection like cool stuff and it will clear it, it will wipe everything out. So we'll rename this text button to clear. And then if we press the button, as you can probably guess, we have nothing. We press this, we get two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Who do you appreciate? No, we won't do cheers and then we can clear those out again. So that's very simple. One more thing we gotta learn before we get a little more complex. There's another function that you probably care about, so let's insert this button. 
And so this button, what we're going to do is we're going to change this and we're going to say we want to clear collect. Clear collect takes a collection and says, hey, if there's stuff in there, clear it first and then add what I have here. So if we do clear collect cold stuff and then we do our little curly brackets here and then we said name equals um, buddy and then we said his phone number is, I don't know, buddy's phone number is one. Sure. So now if we press, oh, let's rename the button so we don't forget. All right, we'll set that to clear collect. And so now if we press this button, so let's hit play. So if we press this button, it is going to put buddy in there. Let's clear. If we had done this and if we hit clear collect, what's going to happen? It's going to clear the collection and then put buddy in there. All right now, what's important to understand, though, is if right now, right, if I keep hitting clear collect, we just keep deleting the row, recreating the row, right? Like it's not doing much. But what we can now do is we can clear collect, right? We got buddy. Now if we hit collect. Look, there's Lori and Tom. There's more Lori and Tom, right? Because remember, what did collect do that was different than clear collect? Collect said, hey, if there's something already in the collection, then let me just add to the collection. So that's why it's adding rows. So I see a lot of beginners struggle with this, right? When do I use clear collect when I want use collect? Well, you have to ask yourself, do I want what was already in there or do I want to start blank? And so that's kind of how you think about these two. And of course, clear just wipes it all out again. Okay. So there is our collections. Now you're probably thinking, well, all right, Shane, that was great and all, but I don't want a bunch of buddies, Lori's and Tom's. Well, who doesn't want buddy, Lori and Tom? That's rude. No. So what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a simple little interface real quick to collect what we want. All right. So let's throw a label. We'll pull this over here. We'll set this label to be name. Then let's insert ourselves a text input. Now with the text input, we're going to do a couple quick things, right? We're going to get rid of default text. I also want you to go over here to the left and rename this because we're going to use it in a formula in a minute and it's easier to reference it if you've got it renamed, right? So input name. And I just double clicked on it to rename it if you've never done it. Or you can hit the ellipses and say rename here. So then now we can insert a text label here. And then we're going to say um, phone number, right? And what we type here in the labels doesn't matter. We could have just typed in Bob. It doesn't matter. Then we'll do another text input. We'll throw this one over here. We'll get rid of default. And then we're going to rename this one INP for input and then PN for phone number. So then now what we're going to do is we're going to take our collect button. So we're going to say copy. We're going to paste it and pull it over here, right? This is less typing for me. So now we only want to do one at a time. So we'll get rid of Tom. Bye, Tom. And then for name, Lori equals this, right? So we don't want name Lori. We want name to be input name dot text. There it is. And then for phone number, now notice before I change this, right? Phone number's data type is number, right? When we do input of PN, what are we going to get? We're going to get text. So what we need to do here, we're going to delete the 12 is we're going to use the value function. And inside there, we're going to put input PN dot text. That will convert the text that comes out of PN. So the text one and text two to the number 12. The other thing we might do is click on a little input here. We'll just change its format from numbers. So they can only put in numbers. But now watch. So we'll clear this out. And so now if we went here and we said Shane and is number one, duh, we'll say collect. There it is. And now if we change this to Nicola and she is number two and collect. And so now we're collecting the information from the text inputs. We could still click this and throw Lori and Tom in there. If we click this, what would happen? Uh-oh, uh we lost Nicola and Shane, right? And there is no undo, so they would just have to go back in here and re-enter the data again. That's how collect works, right? You, you design a collection, and then once you've got the collection, you know, you've got your format, your columns here, then it just wants what it wants, right? Name wants text. It doesn't care if that text comes from hard-coded like we did over here. It doesn't care if it comes from a text input here. It could come from a flow. It could come from... A variable, it doesn't matter. It just wants text in this spot right here where we're at. So that's what it wants. The same for this. PN wants phone number, wants a number. Doesn't care, right? I could change this to the number to be, you know, 12 plus 12, right? That what is that? It's 24. So then if I press collect now, what happens? We'll have a Shane and a 24. Right? Don't overthink these things. They just want what they want. Give them what they want and they will be happy. You might be thinking, can you show me an example of where you would use something like this? So I'll show you maybe two, one, maybe two, we'll see. So one is if you've ever seen this app before, and I'll put a link to the video series. It's a multi-part series to build this thing out. But down here, if we go here and say new expense, 
And so if we go here to, um, you know, expense description, right? So this is demo, doesn't matter, type of expense is training. But so over here on the left, this is a collection, right? And so this is how I am actually uh, saying expense item is taco, expense cost is 12, 20, whatever, 22. When I hit save, it saves that. This is not, the save button is not saving it off to the data source. It's not getting saved to my data source right now. It is just getting saved in a collection because I want to be able to come in here and then add, you know, pizza and then $5 for pizza, Ooh, expensive pizza, expensive tacos, expensive everything. Um, but oh, you know what? Tacos were actually $2. Oh, that makes more sense, right? And so we can hit save. So the idea of a collection, this is a great use of a collection. I want my users to be able to grab, pull in data, edit, manipulate it, right? If you're new to collections, this is too advanced for you right now, but go watch the series. Or remember, if you sign up at training.powerapps911.com to our YouTube library, you can download this working app. But really, this is, look at that, it's a gallery with its collection, right? This is the same type of stuff that you've already, you just learned how to do just uh, on steroids. Okay, so that's one use of it. Um, another use, I won't demo, but just to remind you, so sometimes like if we have, say, we had a list of all the employees over here and I wanted to pick the people I was gonna make work overtime this weekend. So I wanted to have a select box that selected the people I was picking, so click, 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 click. As they're selecting the different employees, I'm putting them into a collection so I can be like, all right, here's the list of people I selected, great. Let me now, you know, press the process to continue giving them that, right? So collections are used for that. The next use of collections that we wanna talk about is that collections can cache data sources, okay? So let's create a new screen and let's add um, two data sources, right? So we're gonna go here, we're gonna search for SharePoint. Way down here at the bottom is SharePoint, SharePoint. Over in my Power Apps videos. And I'm gonna add a department list and the employees list, right? So this is just adding them like you've always added data sources. Now that I've added them, I'm going to insert a gallery and I'm going to show um, employees, right? Notice cool stuff shows up here because collections, they're just tables. There's employees and that pulls them in. So in this list, there is a column called department. And so if I wanted to then use the departments list to find out who the department manager is for executive in this case, I would insert a label in here or I guess I'd say you could. And then I'm going to do a lookup to departments, right? That's my SharePoint list. And then where uh, title equals this item dot department, right? And then we do manager. And then there you go. You see all the managers, right? So the problem with doing this, this works. This is terrible. Don't ever do this. But what's happening here is that for every one of these departments, it is making a call to the data source. So if there's 100 departments here, then we're calling SharePoint 100 individual times to find those 100 different managers. Boo. Departments isn't going to change, and it is a tiny list, right? So another use of collections, insert a button here, is I can go right here, and I can say collect, or we'll do clear collect, right, most typically in this scenario not clear data, clear collect. And then what we want, what do we want to collect? I want to collect this into a new one, so we'll call it coal department. Remember, we'll call it coal cow. You can call it anything you want, doesn't matter. And for the item here, instead of making records, we can pass a whole table, okay? So if I do that, what's gonna happen? This is gonna create a collection called coal cow. And if we look in coal cow, it is, that entire SharePoint list, right? So in one call, I got the whole SharePoint list and stored it into the collection. So now I go over here and replace the lookup here and change this to cold cow. I get the same results, but I get them faster because now if I have 100 departments, it's checking memory 100 times to get that instead of making 100 network calls, which are very expensive, very slow to SharePoint. So caching data with collections is a really neat way to, neat, it's a really interesting way to grab data um, and use it, right? So this is a very popular first use of collections, it's just caching things. Keep in mind that clear collect or, or collect, either one, is not delegable. If you do not know what delegation is, it is irresponsible to build power apps if you don't understand delegation, right? That's where you get the little yellow triangles, the blue underlines, Watch the video on delegation four times and then come back. It is not delegable. So you can't cache a list with more items than the delegation limit and the delegation maximum limit could be 2000. It's 500 by default.
So if you had a list with 10,000 records, you can't cash that in collections. Now, if you're thinking, Shane, I saw this clever thing on the internet one time on how to like stack collections, don't do that. Don't ever build collections more than 2,000 items if you can avoid it, it's a bad idea. So the other thing that collections can do, the same way that this said, let me grab cold cow and let me, uh, or let me grab departments and put it in cold cow, you can do the reverse. Say that we had a collection full of departments, right? So right, let's do it, we're, we're gonna be brave, right? So insert another button. So let's say that I have a collection, so clear collect, coal department cash, right? Once again, names don't matter. And I'm gonna say, all right, in this one, I wanna have title equals demo, and then um, manager equals dude, <laughs> I don't know, okay? So if I did that, right, what does that do? That makes a collection called coal department cash and it has one row in it, manager, dude, title, right? So now that I've done that, if we insert another button, I can actually bulk write that to, back to um, our data source, right? So SharePoint in this case. So what you can do is you can say collect, and then in this case, it is our SharePoint list departments, and then give it coal department cash, like so. So if I press this button now, what it will do is it will take whatever's in coal department cache, as long as the data structure matches, and it does because I have a title and manager column and those are titles the only required column. So if I now press this button, notice it took a half second. If we go over to departments, so just use my little edit data trick here. Look at the bottom, there is demo and dude. So this is one of the bulk ways you can do it. Now, there's a lot of really cool bulk stuff you can do. I guess I'll just put the link to that video up there above. I have lots of videos. I just try to make this one not too long. Um, but so that would talk to you about bulk ways to, you know, use collect to push data out there. Now, the last thing I'll just remind you is that, you know, these collections, they are, um, you know, they are tables. So for example, if I went back over here and I'm like, hey, you know, I wanna be able to get rid of these things. Well, how do you get rid of stuff in a table, right? Well, you change this icon to look like a trash can. And then you could use our dear friend, remove. And you'd say remove from coal stuff, this item. And so now if I click on a coal's record, it's gone, right? Now if I click on Shane one, it's gone, right? So all of your table functions work. So remove, add columns, show columns, you know, we do a lot of stuff. We have to manipulate massage collections to be exactly what we want. All your table manipulation functions will work. So keep that, you can patch collections, um, you know, they're a table. The only caveat I'll throw is that collections don't work with forms. You cannot use forms and collections together. There, there's some shenanigans to make that work again. I'm not here to teach you shenanigans. I think you know that by me, about me by now. So there you go, that's what we've got for today. Um, if you need any help with collections or building your Power Apps, remember over at www.powerapps911.com, right? We have consulting, training, mentoring, right? We'll get somebody on a call with you, screen share, just to fix your one problem, let you move on. No big deal. Let us know. Reach out to us over there. Um, if you have any questions or comments that I can help in regard to this video, leave them below. I, uh, I try to respond to as many of those as I can, and I always use those for ideas for future videos. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.